beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son stay blessed it's important that when we come into God's presence, we listen. You will think that when people come into God's presence like this, the fact that you are looking at me, it doesn't mean you are listening. Are we together? People can be distracted. People can be careless. Some can be looking with their eyes open, but they are sleeping. Are we together? All kinds of things happen it was Jesus himself that told us what happened to seeds. Some fall by the wayside. Correct seed, correct sower. Some fall by the wayside. Some fall in the midst of thorns. Some fall on a rocky ground. Even among the good soils, three kinds of results. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. May you be 100 fold tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. A day will come in your life where you would have sufficiently gained access to the mysteries of the kingdom alongside the keys that release their power. And let me tell you, when that time comes, you will be nothing short of a wonder. Everybody around you will know that the finger of God is upon your life. We make impact in this world through mysteries. We make impact in this world not through desire. It takes more than desire to make true impact for the kingdom. I'll share a thought with us and then we'll walk on a scripture and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I shared with us here, for those of us who were not there, please listen attentively. And by the way, those following us online, we love you, we honor you, you are part of us. That there are three platforms upon which impact is established. Please listen. When God is ready to reveal himself to a man, when God is ready to do business with a man upon the earth, there are only three platforms as revealed from scripture upon which that man will access capacity to make impact platform number one encounters don't forget this they are not cheap they are not basic at all encounters the first platform that grants a man access to walk with God is encounter Everybody say encounter. Encounters are very, very important because they birth spiritual realities in our spirits. By encounters, I don't just mean visionary encounters, even encounters through the word. An experience that makes God real to you. An experience that makes a dimension of God real to you. It could be aided through a vision, 
it could be aided through a supernatural experience but regardless of what platform it comes through any experience capable of making a dimension of god become real to you is called an encounter true encounters produce conviction not memory conviction a true encounter listen it doesn't just leave you with a memory it produces conviction if you tell me you've had an encounter with a dimension of god i will know i don't care whether you claim you had a vision or a scripture opened up to you when it is opened up to you the first time that you had an encounter is unusual conviction it translates to faith if god gives you an encounter of his healing power it produces conviction if god gives you an encounter of a dimension of spiritual reality it must come with conviction say conviction there are so many people in the body of christ who are not convicted about the things they teach it's one thing to teach from a theological standpoint and that's important it's one thing to teach from a sociological standpoint but it's one thing to teach from a depth of conviction it's not by shouting it's not the volume of your voice it's not the the repetition of your grammar conviction is a realm where you're speaking your listeners know that the things you are saying are true with you say encounters we must crave for encounters you know people who don't really understand this thing think that all we are advocating is that people begin to have out of body experiences and they begin to propose as though you are telling people to not pay attention to the word of god to now begin to contend for angelic encounters heavenly encounters as above the word of god no the bible says god appeared um to samuel in shiloh by his word are we together he appeared by his word so an encounter doesn't necessarily mean until you see an angel and he says promise i was sent from heaven to you that from today you take the healing power of god to the nations and then every time you stand you say i remember what the angel said yes that's an encounter but there are men like reinhard bonke who had encounters they never had any visionary experience when you listen to reinhard bonke's story he will tell you that a day came they brought in a great man of god to preach the man preached the first day and told all the sick people to come by the second day and the morning of the second day reinhard bonke was excited because they were going to wheel all kinds of sick people in africa if you tell people to bring the sick they are obedient they will bring the sick whether they are related to them or not they will that sense of nationhood will kick in they will drag every sick person and so they brought those people and the preacher told reinhard bonke he said the lord told me to pack up my things and get out of this place you will preach and you will heal reinhard bonke said no 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 no. you can't be playing i mean you are the great man of god I'm only here to encourage you. And he said, I'm sorry, I have to be on my way. Reinhard Bonke said he cried and cried because his ministry was about to be shredded into pieces. And then all of a sudden, that's an encounter. The word of the Lord comes. You don't read it, it comes. In the fifth day of the fifth month of this, the word of the Lord came. There's the one you try to get, but the one that comes is what produces encounter. And Reinhard Bonke just looked and said, Lord, I will go and do the preaching and you will do the healing and that was it a man who has produced a ministry that has liberated africa encounters you can be reading a scripture you can be reading john 3 16 but one day the word of the lord will come to you for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him when that encounter comes you can sing songs like yes jesus loves me you sang it in sunday school it was not an encounter it was a recitation but when it comes as an encounter you will sing that song and you are crying and somebody looks at you and says ah, ah, you are deeper than this and he said that's the point it has not come to you but it came to me Are we together?
encounters my life is a testimony of encounters i can point to you exact periods in my life where certain things happen that birthed certain convictions that have been responsible for releasing certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities may god give us encounters Amen. the meeting is called koinonia and the first thing you should get is an encounter if you are a prayer leader without an encounter a pastor without an encounter an apostle a prophet whatever you call yourself a time will come your lack of assurance will become evident to those you are leading are we together it's not by bold face bold face is not encounter i know god will show up please encounters produce convictions unto death but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded say god give me encounters say it again god give me encounters you believe god has called you into the ministry of kingdom wealth but you are not sure you don't have encounters so you are hoping you will be rich to prove to people that you were called into the ministry of kingdom financing you lack encounters listen an encounter makes your conviction as your primary evidence not physical results your conviction becomes your primary evidence so god can call you to the nations as at the time you are speaking the only other listener is your wife but you still say god called me to the nations i love men of convictions conviction conviction we we live in a result driven a carnal result driven generation where until you produce physical results that can be seen people oftentimes will not believe you so you will need encounters let me tell you so that when things do not happen the way you want you are still left with your encounter job said though he slay me yet will i trust him i know him the god in the mountain is still god in the valley let me tell you why many people gas out many pastors many preachers i've seen a lot of preachers say god sent me to so 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 city when the city became too hot and whipped them they left quietly encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina he said if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small one guy came and met me one time and he said god has called him into the apostolic ministry i said congratulations a few months later it became too hot for him and he came back he said i get it now i'm an evangelist i said go. i told him i said go for a retreat a retreat that produces an encounter because he thought it's just in a name usually when it becomes too hot people change persecution <laughs> we think the name will give you access for preaching fast so you say i am prophet a and b and c and then the heavy controversy that lands on your head you quietly remove it and say i am pastor joshua selman <laughs> say encounters may god give us encounters Amen. one big secret in my life is that god used encounters to convince me of my call solid encounters both visionary encounters word encounters prophetic encounters that's why no matter what anybody says or does i will never even pray about it that's how certain i am when you try to explain things to people you don't have conviction enough please talk to someone by your side and say get conviction get conviction strong conviction are we together strong conviction we doubt and we fall by the wayside and we make a mess of and you know it's a terrible thing to brag so much before people and then you are now forced to defend your advocacy but the encounter that will sponsor your confidence is not there 
If I believe God has called me to carry the healing anointing and there are 100 wheelchairs and I pray for them and nobody gets healed, I tell them, may God bless you and uh, have a nice day. And I'll go to sleep. And someone says, but man of God, ah, it's either you are backsliding or something has happened. I will go back and challenge myself to rise greater. But I will not go back saying, God, if it's that I didn't hear you well, can you explain to me again? No. We're laughing, but I'm, I'm trusting that God is speaking to us. Encounters. Do you know that the world follows men of conviction? If I am a thief today, there is a, there is a certainty about my stealing that will force you to say, look, this guy knows what he's doing. He's worth hearing. Terrorists are men of encounter and conviction. They have met spirits. The spirits told them certain things. So while the government is trying to advise them and say, why don't you become nice social beings? They say, all of you are confused and we are out to kill you and bomb you. And you say, are you sure you will do this? Yes. What of your life? What of your wife and your family? And they say, to hell with them. Conviction from an encounter. What encounter do you have that sponsors your confidence? Oh, I saw God give a Jimmy this. It's not enough reason. You must have a personal encounter. We lack this a lot. I'm taking out time to help you understand this. We lack this a lot in the body of Christ. You can borrow Joshua Selman's revelation. Listen to one koinonia message and just write everything out. And preach in a conference. And say, God said there is this and that and that. But you know, there is a way people look through you. And they see that even you as you are preaching, you are just saying, Lord, I hope I'm right. I'm about to pray. Joshua Selman prayed after that message. And now I'm about to pray after my own. Then you stand and speak and say, I see angels everywhere. Whether or not you are seeing them. Because you thought I was lying. So now you say, I see angels. Overflow, are you ready? Say yes. No encounter. That's how preachers disgrace themselves convention after convention till everybody in your circle stops bringing you for meetings because you have a track record of copying with no results someone can guide you but the ultimate journey is that you meet christ you meet him not just theologically but you have an encounter say amen, amen. it's good to know the god of joshua selman but stay until that God becomes your God. The people told the woman, the, the Samaritan woman, he said, we believe you now, not just because you told us. We have seen him for ourselves. You came and introduced us, but ah, talking with him, he did something to us. In the name of Jesus, may God give us encounters over your business, over your life over your family so that when you go and you look at your cgpa and you look at it from 4.5 god forbid but you drop to 3.5 and you see three carryovers you don't suddenly say ah and god said i'll be a leader god you must come and you see some prayers are, are revelations of the doubts you've been nursing for many years so what you have feared secretly now comes upon you and you say god but you told me now you told me eh? you told me that this brother will marry me this one that he has done introduction what are you saying don't make noise until you have the burning bush experience we brag too much on hearsay i watch preachers talk sometimes and i'm saying be careful though jesus is lord but his lordship is exercised with wisdom and understanding If you are not healed in this meeting, except I'm not called. Hey. At the end of the meeting, only two people are healed. Encounters. Encounters. I crave for them. I create the atmosphere for them. I desire them in my life. Encounters. It's not about reading the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. 
It's not about quoting scripture as important as it is. It's not about a display of Greek and Hebrew words. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions produce faith. Faith moves mountains. It's not what you do. It's the conviction behind what you do. Number two. The second platform upon which men do business with God is a comprehension or access to the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. An encounter is one. You meet a person in an encounter. But you must comprehend the principles of the kingdom. Is God helping us tonight? Your knowledge of the principles, the working knowledge of the principles of the word of God is another platform for you to activate a life and a destiny of impact. So what principles do you know? It says, and I will give you the keys. Right? And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, King James says. Whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amplified says, whatever you allow, whatever you disallow, the power to release realities and the power to close doors is called the key of David. Your life, there is a dimension of impact in your life. Hear me, brothers and sisters, that is a product of the mysteries that you know. This is what I define as dominion. You've heard me say it again and again. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. We've spent this year, as much as many other years, dissecting these mysteries. Under the teaching secrets of the kingdom, the series, get it, secrets of the kingdom, right? I taught you six mysteries that control mighty, dramatic manifestations upon the earth. Mystery number one, I taught you is the law of surrender. The law of surrender. That this is the mystery that holds the key to unusual amounts of unction upon the lives of people. Complete surrender. Complete surrender. Mystery number two is the power of a transformed mind. For as he thinketh in his heart, right? So he's so he is i told you realities are first formed in the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical realm so you never try to change anything by physically trying to alter it you alter it from the realm of the spirit and it changes mystery number three is the law of competence seest thou a man diligent in his business he says he shall not stand before mean men he shall stand before kings are we together we we did this very very mystery number four i explained to you the secret of coming out of situations that are about to swallow you in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path that's what the bible says he said trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding a time must come in a man's life where you face challenges that are bigger than your current level of exposure. You don't know anything about that challenge. Know how to go out. At that time, the key is to acknowledge him. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Praise is a weapon for acknowledgement. So as you begin to acknowledge him, there is a promise attached. He said, he will make straight your path. Mystery number five is the mystery I call it the irrefutable mystery of destiny helpers. Men and women anointed, commanded, instructed to appear in your destiny and take you to the next level. I'm doing a recap. It, it, please, I, I don't know how to plead with you. Believe what I'm teaching you and understand it and you will change your life. There are three kinds of destiny helpers. I shared with us the other time number one they are called divine connectors they do not have the ability to help you 
but they can link you to where your help is divine connectors number two men of influence they have the capacity both the economic power both the governmental power right the intellectual prowess to endorse you and open up doors for you an example of such a person is joseph of arimathea a man who through his influence jesus was ordered to come down from the cross and buried in a tomb you need them and then number three faithful men the third kind of destiny helpers faithful men 400 of these men came to david david was running he was a failure he was broke he was on his way ministry had packed up but 400 men came and they entered a covenant with themselves to be loyal to him until he became king and then the last mystery which in my opinion is the most powerful maybe secondary to only an encounter is the law of honor hebrews 7 7 and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the greater i told you that there is a system in the body of christ nobody blesses himself you cannot lift yourself to a new dimension are we together no matter how anointed you are no matter how great you are at every point in your life there are people below you trusting god for your grace to lift them there are people above you there are those who already represent what your future aspirations are and there are people who you represent their future aspiration the recognition of that is the key to living where you are to the next level you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly there are human beings that represent systems the recognition of what they represent alongside the possibilities god has opened unto them will bring you into their realm of reality honor is the key to access every time a door closes over your life this honor closed it and every time a door opens over you honor opened it so there are many other mysteries that we have to learn i can teach you mystery upon mystery upon mystery one of it is he that wants friends must first show himself friendly now you read these things as verses until god opens your eyes then you will see the reason why many people never have the gift of men because they are not friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown to be friendly means to be hospitable Are we together? It says that you neglect not being hospitable for in it, many have entertained angels unaware. It was through hospitality Sarah trapped the angels and they gave a revelation about the inevitable doom of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was on the strength of that hospitality that Abraham was given access to that mystery and with it he rescued Lot. Praise the Lord. The third platform upon which men receive from God and create lives of notable impact in the earth is covenant connection. Covenant connection. Covenant connection. May God make us believe what I'm sharing. May God make us believe it. May God make us believe it in the name of Jesus Christ. Covenant connection. The Bible speaking about men and describing the nature and the character of their success says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the, sin, the seat of the scornful. It says, but his delight, what? Is in the law of the Lord. And on that law he meditates day and night. Then he says, he shall be. This is how his success will be. In the similitude of that of a tree. If the Bible says you shall be like something, study that thing. It says the success of a believer will be like that of a tree. How does a tree rise? Number one, it is planted. From the stem that rises, branches begin to come. All branches do not move in the same direction. But regardless of their direction, 
the strength of the branches are determined by the strength of the vine that they are connected to they may face different directions and the trees can grow so tall taller than buildings and the trees can stand for years and decades branches fall and rise they are pruned and they come again but the stem connected to the root remains intact any branch that cuts itself outside of the vine dies you don't water the branches you water the roots and it has a system are we together trying to pour water on leaves is a waste of time a system so he said he shall be like a tree listen our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant please you have to understand this our personal work with God is based on relationship however kingdom advancement is based on covenants not the covenant of Moses not the covenant of the New Testament I'm not talking old and new covenant a covenant is a system through which God guarantees a continuity of his program now listen listen look up please let me teach you this get it get it in the name of Jesus Christ the way the kingdom works is through the principle of covenant and alignment please listen so what happens is that every dispensation has a dimension of spiritual realities that they should experience which is part of the ongoing unfolding of the multifaceted dimension of god are we together so every dispensation has a dimension of god earmarked for them to experience but the nature and the character of that revelation is such that when god wants to come in in a dimension to a territory and a dispensation his first assignment is to find a man say a man when he finds a man he enters a personal covenant with that man that personal covenant becomes the platform upon which that dimension of god is revealed to the dispensation no other person will access that dimension in that dispensation out of alignment to the person in covenant with god are you getting what i'm saying yeah god will not reveal the same thing to everybody he will reveal the same thing to one person and direct every other person who wants to experience that part of him to align with the covenant that he has had upon that man or upon that system are we together the yardstick that he uses to bring men to that experience is called an election of grace it has nothing to do necessarily with their personal yieldedness it is part of his sovereignty and his predeterminate counsel so god calls men every time you are talking about redemption the journey of redemption and the doctrine of christ starts from abraham not noah not adam are we together whether it's christianity whatever kind of religion the moment they are communicating the doctrine of christ the genesis of the blueprint of the doctrine of christ starts from abraham god called one man to come out of a place called all of the chaldeans genesis chapter 12 right he wanted to use his father terror but something happened and he the, the, you know the button passed on to abraham and he called abraham an idol worshiper out of all of the chaldeans and he called him and he said look i am calling you out come out of your father's house your kindred and all of that and i will do certain things with you and abraham obeyed him there are so many people in the bible that represents god's covenant point there are portals that open their dispensation and their generations to certain dimensions of god that law did not die with the coming and the going of Jesus Christ. There are still men today that represent new dimensions of God or continuity of his program. Hmm. Are we together? Alongside your encounter, 
alongside your comprehension of the laws of the spirit your covenant connection to men or systems that represent the continuity of God in that dimension but this is where Satan cheats a lot of people please listen to me carefully this is something else I'm talking about but we need to understand this God asked me to reiterate these things you know why we honor men we honor men for many reasons number one is the anointing they carry number two the sacrifice that they have with God that has brought certain levels of possibilities in their life number three is the spiritual system that they represent when David wanted permission to fight Goliath do you know the question Saul asked he said whose son is this in other words I want to know the tribe he came from so that I know whether this can be possible this boy is too young I'm a king but I need to know where he's coming from so we can trace the history of the spiritual deposits God left with that tribe. And when they found out that David was of the Benjamite, he said, go and fight. David came to him and he said, Goliath, I know you think I'm a small boy, but there is a tribe standing before you, not a person. Watch what happens to you now. Goliath said, am I a dog? David said, we will we'll see who, who is the dog. I have seen people in my life who never become billionaires but they never lack whether they pray or not even when they are not tithing it's a covenant there is something they are connected to whether they know it or not that affords them those spiritual possibilities <sighs> open our eyes oh god in the name of jesus christ i have seen pastors who when they stand to teach you will almost sleep but when they call upon the god of heaven he shows up it's not personal encounter in fact many of them may have a lot of character defaults and while you are talking about their character it's like god owes them his presence they call him and he must show up there is a covenant he respects he says my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth are we together so some of our people, although they were in the village with witchcraft, they had 16 children, one woman, 16 children. And yet, after 16 children, the woman is still standing, her stomach is still as flat as an arrow. You wonder whether the children grew in a basket. It's a covenant. Brothers and sisters, it's not about knowing what drug to take. Some things are spiritual. When they are spiritual, they show and you see it. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Hmm. Oh, you better believe it. So that when you look at a man, you know that not every result you see was initiated by his personal altar. When you know that, there will be no room for pride when God begins to give you results. Because you will know that certain dimensions of your result are purely an issue of alignment. Purely an issue of what? Alignment. Spiritual alignment. There was a time, for instance, in living faith, it still happens, where there were strange testimonies, 2005, 2006, creative, those ones were, it's what the Bible calls the walking of miracles, not testimonies, where a man would tell you, I was a cleaner, and by Sunday, the owner of the company said he's leaving Nigeria, and they made me a CEO, strange testimonies. So you see somebody who drag himself and he's sleeping while they are preaching. Sleeping. They say in Jesus' name, he never says amen. He's even angry. But something still came on him. With the anger, he turns and he leaves and goes back and the landlord says, you are staying five years in this house. The rent is, is free. And the man says, I don't understand what is happening to me. Two weeks later, they call him and say, there is a job we want to give you. And he says, I don't understand. There is a covenant. When God looks at you, he sees the covenant. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. 
Alleluia. If you know this thing I'm teaching you, you can, you can make, it's not a license to sin. You can make the worst blunder on earth. Quarter to shame. The covenant kicks in. And God says, I remember. <sighs> Jonah! Jonah was running as a rebel. But God used what happened to describe what will happen to Jesus. Jonah! He says the same way Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Was that a good testimony? Yet yeah, Jesus used it. God had Solomon for the sake of his father, David. When Solomon dedicated the temple, he lifted the temple and he said, Lord, I enter a covenant with you that whoever faces this temple and pray, whether their faith level is there or not, hearken to them. So in the days of Daniel, they signed a policy and they said nobody should pray. Daniel knew that if you will use his personal faith, he's a human being. The truth about it is that it was not just his personal spiritual life. So he opened the window to Jerusalem and he started praying. And listen, that was why he was sure when they were about to throw him in the lion's den. God did not show up because of Daniel. He showed up because of the covenant. What have you enjoyed in your life because of covenant connection? Some of us, every good thing that has happened to you has come because of your, your personal push, which is good. But brothers and sisters, the demand that life will place on you will be greater than your spiritual life. And if you have to wait till you become strong, you may not even live for that to happen. There are people in Koinonia here, they are not tightening, but they are having strange results. They, even them, they are doubting, they are saying, what's wrong? Something is covering you. It's a covenant. Break every chain. Break every chain. Those who know this do business with God upon the earth and open strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors. Living faith, redeemed and MFM. There are three ministries that have seen them with such a strange covenant of, of ownership. They can enter any land regardless of the vow the government made not to give them land. They must give them land as much as they want. It's a revelation. Are we together? Brothers and sisters, some things are not just about fasting and prayer. There is an advantage God placed in the body. And if you are not aware of it, you may never step into certain dimensions. Never step into certain dimensions. I came to show you certain things. God said I should teach it again. If God says I should teach it, it means many of us did not get it. There are certain things in my life I will, I will never suffer and struggle over. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that foolish. I am not that foolish. You see, it's a painful thing when you are suffering certain things that is available by covenant to the tribe you belong to. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Elijah was a man who had a covenant with God that represented the system of the prophetic and the apostolic. He had other sons called the sons of the prophet. Is that true? But he had a strange man who was a farmer called Elisha. Elisha was not a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. He casted his mantle upon him and Elisha started following him. Join other prophets. Listen. And then the Bible says a time came when Elijah, Elijah was about to go to heaven. Is that a normal human being? Is that how you go to heaven? But that's how he went to heaven. That's how you know that it's not a normal human being. He knew where the gate of heaven was beyond the Jordan. He said, I'm about to leave. He knew where to wait for the chariots. Ah. A man was taking fresh air on a mountain. And they came to harass him. He used one of the elements of the supernatural called fire. He said, I will not just use my mouth. If I be a man of God, let fire come from heaven. He prayed once and fire came. Is that how you pray when you stand? Look at what... He, he, hi. Koinonia, hear what I'm teaching you. Listen. 
when they were about to judge the prophets of Baal, there are some dimensions of witchcraft that is your covenant of connection that dislodges them. Not just your personal prayer and fasting. When the prophets of Baal were there, they were prophets under the custody of Jezebel. And look at the mockery. Elijah said, laugh. He said, he said, cut yourself, shout. Maybe your God is sleeping. Look, if I am Elijah, I will be fasting. <laughs> Deliver me, O God. Wipe my tears. For the sake of your glory. I will be writing out the worship songs. Looking for somebody to play a cymbal. But here was a man crossing his leg. And mocking at them. From morning till evening he laughed. Because he knew they were wasting their time. After everything. They caught themselves. So that their God will see blood. And remember their covenant with him. When they tried singing and praising and it did not work. They danced around the prophets of Baal. They started bringing blood. What is blood? The covenant. Baal, remember our covenant as prophets with you. And Elijah shut the heavens and said, keep calling on him. Then when it was time for Elijah, I thought Elijah would have just said, all right, God, fire come down. He would have been surprised. He said, give me 12 stones. 12 stones listen listen let me teach you something the bible says in the new jerusalem it said the gates of the city there were 12 gates and the gates had a name of the 12 tribes of israel every one of those tribes represented a dimension of god and 12 foundations having the name of the apostles he said give me 12 stones and the prophets of Baal were watching after it he put a sacrifice and then he said pour water the water was a mystery. He was not just trying to say so that you don't think I hit fire. Because there are three forces that open the gates in this earth realm. The spirit, the water, and the blood. So he said, pour water. Afterwards, he lifted his eyes to the heaven. The pattern was correct. Follow me. And he said, oh God. And the fire, the Bible said the fire came, licked the sacrifice, and swept everything right and then hear what he said the moment that happened he said pursue all the prophets of Baal don't let one escape and kill them hear me people of God there are dimensions there are kinds of mountains that were never designed to be approached alone we fool ourselves thinking because we know God every mountain will just go like that he said, all things are possible, but they are, they are possible based on the knowledge available to you. If you can see me as I'm going, you will have something. The moment he left and he held the mantle, he would have gone to the well and said, I am a man of God. Pat, he would have been surprised. He said, where is the Lord God? As far as God was concerned, he did not see Elisha. He saw the covenant. Did the water obey? Absolutely. Do you know why Joshua was successful? God transferred a mystery to him. As I was with Moses, as I was, the way I related with him, so I will relate with you. He said, and because of that, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. So when the angel appeared, Joshua removed his knife and he was going to kill the angel. The angel had to explain he would have died. The word of God would have killed the angel. Not the sword of Joshua. He said, are you for us or against us? And the angel said, hold on. Neither. He had to explain. Because a man was running with the word of God. The Bible says, for instance, it says where two or three are gathered, where? In my name. The meaning is as touching my authority. There is a dimension of God that only shows up on that corporate fellowship you will never have that dimension alone in your room fast for 100 days you will not see those things that was why the psalmist was crying he said early will i seek you he said to see your power and your glory in my life as i have seen in the sanctuary there's something i've seen that only happens when believers gather i've not seen it can you make it happen in my life hallelujah he says, if two of you shall agree, hold my hands, Jimmy, as touching anything, there are certain levels of prayer 
that it's not just about I am alone. The veil has been torn. I, I'm, I'm alone. I can access Christ. It's a system. There are certain levels of difficulty that when two or three agree, you can just say one prayer. That was why the apostles, when they were threatening them, did they pray individually? Acts chapter 4. Remember they came together because they understood this. It took that kind of grace to bring the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. They could not pray alone and have the Holy Spirit come. So when the Bible says, Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it said they were all gathered in one accord. That formation gave the Holy Spirit room to come. In Acts chapter 4, when they threatened them, they came together and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. It says, stretch forth your right hand now to heal and that signs and wonders be wrought through your holy child. And the building shook. There is a difference between your personal prayer life and the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a mystery of possibilities. When you understand the mysteries that govern the body of Christ, you will do things that you will never imagine you would have done. Are we together? I remember when a few people wrote jam here. You were, you were testaments of the things. Marks being added. I'm not talking of those 40 40 marks. You see, people, someone will check his job 197, go and check again 231. How did that happen? Look, let me tell you something. When you see a man of God study the systems around his life, don't just say this person is anointed, Kai, he has power. What makes the heaven owe him? It's like it's like God, God owes certain men of God a debt he must pay. Even if they call his name joking, he has to show up. There is something that makes that happen. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Our covenant is calling you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Sing it one more time. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. Is calling you, oh God, take my praise, oh God, take my praise. Listen, let me tell you something powerful. Numbers 24, let me do my teaching now. Mike. Numbers 24. Let me share something with you that will break some gates open. I want your spirit to be sensitive. Something will happen in this place today. Numbers 24. Mm. Balaam was called by Balak. To curse the nation of Israel. I've shared it here. The Lord asked me to repeat it. So I'm repeating it. Now listen. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel. It's actually 23, 24. I'm jumping for time's sake. Follow the story. He went not as in other times to seek for enchantment. Now there's a lot to say about Balaam. The Bible talks about the doctrine of Balaam. The error of Balaam. The way of Balaam. There is a long story on that. I don't want to go into that. But he set his face towards the wilderness. Let's rush it. Go ahead. And Balaam lifted his eyes. Balaam wanted to find out where. Listen, listen. Let me explain the whole scene for you. A prophet is brought by Balak. And he said, cause koinonia. Make things to start going wrong for people. Are we together? Now, Balaam tells them, look, oh, I am a prophet. 
in other words i don't speak the way i want so as we stand here whatever you hear me say is what god is saying agreed they said agreed so they brought gifts balaam would have sought god by lifting his face to the hills that's the key sammy said i will lift up my eyes to the hills they know where their help comes from but now balaam used enchantment so that god would not be able to prophesy through him are you getting the story he used divination to invoke spirits so that they will prophesy so balaam stood and after he used those enchantments he was about to curse and his mouth produced blessings and he was surprised he moved to another place again and used invocations about to speak and he blessed them he went to another place about to speak and he blessed them and balaam said balak was angry and he said what is all this i brought you to curse them all that has been coming out of your mouth is blessings please watch this and Balaam lifted his eyes to check they were on a mountain and he said no I'm a prophet let me look what is the reason why no cause is working and this is what he saw hallelujah and he saw Israel abiding in what his tents there was a spiritual formation from the valley Israel were wise people they didn't just say let's rest they said ah it is possible that the kings will come and destroy us so let us engage the formation there is a pattern mm. they arrange themselves according to their tribes with the ark of god being at the center and they said let's see who will cause us they kept the card there so when balaam stood at the mountain to cause the ark fought him back and he said i don't know what is wrong i can't cause them i can't cause them then listen to what he said according to their stripes and finally the spirit of god came upon him this is what he said the secret and he took a parable that's how prophets remember hosea chapter 12 i have spoken in similitudes of parables i have multiplied visions he took a parable and he said balaam the son of beor had said speaking about himself and the man whose eyes are open talking about himself had said verse 4 and he had said which heard the words of god which saw the visions of the almighty falling into a trance but having his eyes open verse 5 how goodly are thy tents o jacob and thy tabernacles o israel that's the secret i look at your tent and your spiritual formation and i see you arranged in a way that no cause no enchantment that's why he said no divination no enchantment against jacob it's not just because they are christians please listen to what i'm teaching you now there was a spiritual pattern and literally bala as a true prophet could not cause them they didn't fight they just could not cause them when it was time in set in second chronicles 20 verse 20 or well we we'll read from verse 15 downwards if there's time they were about to fight three kings came together to fight them and the bible said they had another formation Kai. these guys use formations for victory not stories they inquired of the lord what pattern will produce the result and they said let the worshipers be in front and when the worshipers were in front together with the ark the warriors were behind he said this is not an issue of sword and they began to sing hearken all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but the lord's let's read down quickly tomorrow go up against them and so on and so forth 17. listen he said ye shall not what set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the lord O judah and jerusalem fear not or be dismayed tomorrow you go up against them verse and joseph had bowed his head this and that and that verse 19 there's something i'm looking for now listen and the levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of all of those people stood up to what praise the lord of the lord god of israel with a loud voice on high right and then of course they rose early in the morning 
and then when they began to praise you know a prophecy came next verse it says and when he had consulted the people he appointed what look at the formation who did he appoint do you use musicians to fight war musicians to fight war three kings about to kill you i hope you know they were not acting it was real death but there was a pattern it says and they should praise the beauty of his holiness and as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endured forever what happened and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment against the children of ammon moab and mount Seir, which were come against judah and were smitten next verse for the children of this stood up to slay themselves read the last sentence if you're a christian want to read everyone helped to destroy military people killing themselves there were two left and he said who dies first say you either kill the other person and killed himself while they were doing that other people were there invoking a pattern listen there's something I teach the school of ministry students called the reflection principle. Listen, I want to teach you something very powerful. It's a principle that is used in occultism. It's a principle that is used. It was an, an aberration of God's principle. Listen. You only host a spirit and a dimension of the possibility of a spirit if you create the atmosphere for that spirit to feel at home as though it were in its primary place of habitation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if the ambassador of US comes to the US consulate office in Abuja, it was designed to accommodate him. His appetites, the colors, the architecture. Are we together? There is a pattern based on the ideology of the United States. They built the embassy that way so whether he is in nigeria or he's in america it does not make any difference to him because the embassy in nigeria reflects the dexterity and the glory of america are we together now watch this if i want a spirit any spirit please give me this sir. sorry if I want a spirit, assuming I'm a herbalist, I am not a herbalist. Assuming I'm a herbalist, are we together? And I want a spirit to come upon this. I'm not just going to say, Spirit, come. Spirit, break out. And then you think it will come. No. There is, I must find out what that spirit is and the nature of its operation. And the kind of atmosphere that makes it come. And I will make this water become like the atmosphere. The spirit must come. Atmospheres are magnets. They draw spirits and they draw possibilities to the earth and to territories. Please listen to this. This is very important. So this is what the psalmist said. The Holy Ghost wanting to come into the new creation. He said, a body has thou prepared. You prepared it in such a way that when I come into that body, it will be as though I am in heaven. When the body was prepared, the spirit could come. And that body today is called the Ecclesia, the body of Christ. It was built in a particular way. Christ, the foundation, the apostolic, and the prophetic. And then the, it rises and he said, that body you have prepared for me. So God is able to function on earth because of the body that has been prepared for him. Are we together now? When, during our traditional festivals, when they want to see certain spirits, what do the masquerades do? Or the priests? They wear a particular attire, having a particular kind of animal skin, alligator skin, then some use snakes, some use hyenas. Come on, talk to me, Africa. Are we together? So, we have, don't, don't act as if you came from, from, from the Middle East. We are here, we are home. Amen. They use fire. They provoke these spirits. 
they start chanting tongues and start moving in a particular direction they can move here small and come back again they can run and come back while they are doing that someone can be playing drums are we together and then at a particular point the snake will start coming out when the snake starts coming out they start dancing and putting fire because the snake is reflecting what is happening in the realm of the spirit so the gods are now coming the moment that happens what happens it's like people are under the anointing even the priests they are under their anointing they start doing crazy things they took fire in their mouth and nothing happens because a spirit landed let me tell you why it landed there was a pattern i counseled one man um on on tuesday on wednesday in abuja before i came he's one of the popular nigerian directors directors of nigerian film you know and all of that and he told me something he said man of god most of the nigerian films you see us acting the snake we use they are real snakes but what they do is they go to charmers you know these guys are charm snakes so they give them a particular ring so that they can pick the snake and nothing will happen the ring has a pattern it's a language the snake understands that's why sometimes it backfires because those powers expire they must be renewed if at the point of expiration you are the one holding the snake the snake that you were you were in nice romance with would turn and enjoy you immediately are we together patterns so there are men whose lives are patterns you curse them it returns back to you and you are wondering see it is on this basis that you can say i am uncursable now the problem with the church is we say revelations without we we make statements without the spiritual revelation that activates those possibilities i am uncursable in the name of jesus and you find out there's a cause at work in your life clearly everybody knows you are cursed i am not cursed you are cursed we are seeing it it is on the strength of this there is a pattern don't laugh are we together so someone can vow like they vowed to paul and they said paul we will not eat nor drink until you are until you die and paul lived many years afterwards i'm teaching you something you can do on earth that is is like a spiritual formation that will make the Holy Spirit respond to you in a certain way and you will see doors open and you'll be wondering what happened is a pattern Balaam stood on the mountain and he saw the pattern and he said I can't curse them I'm trying I'm making efforts listen I can't tell you how many times on my way to travel people will call me and say apostle I just had a dream are you about to travel i say yes they say please sir don't travel i love you so much koinonia loves you i just had a dream this morning and in that dream i saw a plot and i saw that you had a ghastly motor accident and you died and then i said okay i appreciate now they are not they are not lying they saw it and what they saw was correct but there is a pattern kabarato satayaba David, I'm come and sing a song there in my spirit. Your influence is all over me, right? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. And your influence is all over me. Let's say
sit down. Listen. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to kingdom advancement, don't just think of your personal spiritual life alone. There are limitations to your personal spiritual life as far as kingdom advance is concerned. There are certain strategies of witchcraft that it takes more than you as a person to conquer. It's not that Christ is not king of kings and lord of lords. Please hear me is a law there are formations there are things that have been engaged that requires the strength of the body not your strength alone if you do not understand this you will have a lot of casualties and you will mock yourself spiritual patterns formations that make men forbidable on earth they wanted to curse him just like somebody from your village now wants to curse you and you have been saying in the name of Jesus I'm uncursable I agree with you potentially but you have to engage the mystery that makes your word valid otherwise you will be shouting I will not be cursed until they, they, they kill you like a chicken are we together please listen listen There are three of these spiritual patterns that I want you to learn tonight. I don't know if we can touch all three, but we'll stop somewhere and pray. The first of that pattern listen is the power of altars an altar is a pattern I'm not talking altar like coven no an altar is a token that represents a point where covenants are enacted every time a covenant is enacted an altar is raised on earth as a memorial you see that all through in scripture every time people had covenants with God or with themselves they raised what altars an altar is nothing diabolic at all an altar is just a token it's a representation it doesn't even have to be physical a representation please listen a representation a platform that affords covenant to not only be renewed not only be remembered but to be activated three things happen on altars renewal right continuity or servicing if you want to call it and then the third is activation spiritual realities are activated upon altars listen please listen every man of God every true ministry called of God has an altar they may not call it altar they may call it all kinds of things some call it covenant some call it altar I don't care what they call it but this is what it is it is a token that represents a covenant between God and that man and serves as a memorial the altar that was raised in the day of, of um, Noah, when he raised that altar, there was a sign of a rainbow. Is that true? And God gave this as a token. When circumcision itself is a token. I hope you know. When you circumcise a child, it's a revelation that was given to Abraham. Circumcise them. Joshua circumcised them. 
the power and the revelation of the patterns that altars create are things we should never take for granted especially in such a wicked world koinonia has an altar you hear us sing that song my it's nothing diabolic i don't mean babala or something no, that's not what i'm talking about as a person there are covenants that i've had through my encounters with god that have become the platforms upon which certain possibilities ride the same way i have gleaned upon the covenant of others with god and it has become an advantage it has boosted my personal spiritual life it has boosted the possibilities that i can see in my own life please hear me and i want you to be sensitive we're about to pray be very sensitive right now when abel died when cain killed abel what cried please answer me what cried and he said the blood of Abel cries and the blood is speaking. Abel is dead. The blood is saying revenge. You have to bring vengeance upon Cain. And Jesus now says that even his blood too speaks. The only difference is that his blood speaks better things which were predicated on a better covenant. Are we together? There are altars that speak over the lives and the destinies of men please listen 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 i want to give you spiritual intelligence you don't bind an altar it was enacted by covenant it's called the law of displacement there are two lights they keep shining until a greater light comes then it overshadows them are we together these are spiritual laws so many people do not know the foundation upon which their predicaments are coming they think it's just an issue of personal retreat for three days have you seen people who are praying and fasting on the last day of the fast what they were praying against is what happens maybe somebody sleeps with you in a dream and you charge and get angry and you go and say look three days i'm praying on the third day drive fast you are looking like a skeleton you are about to break. You just decided to take a nap for the last 30 minutes. And here the person comes. As if your prayer made nonsense. In the prayer you are shouting, Jesus, Jesus. And the person is just looking at you. And say, keep shouting your Jesus there. And comes to do exactly what he said to do. You know why I know this thing so well? Because it happened in my life. I've, you've heard my story. Wicked spirits will come and oppress me. And come into my room. My own was not even an experience. I see them they see me but I couldn't do anything about it some of you say I shouted Jesus the pastor said, shouted well you shouted it well nothing happened please don't laugh I'm giving you a mystery because we're about to pray are we together we have lost the advantage of the patterns that God gave the body it's not about an individual's personal success there are times when the secret to your breakthrough is based on alignment to covenants that God has had and he will respond to you and have respect for the covenant are we together there are people who have a covenant with God that every time they show up in a city there must be breakthroughs so they show up in a city to have a crusade and when they show up to have a crusade people who have no business with that crusade receive breakthroughs that have nothing to do with that ministry because for as long as that individual is there that territory has an advantage of tapping into the covenant that he has are you getting what i'm saying there are people who personally their prayer life is dead but when they get to the prayer department on Tuesday to pray, you find out that you who was struggling to pray for five minutes, you now stretch for two hours. It's because something picked you. That's why you can go back home and say, ah. So it is God's system to help you so that even when your spiritual life is down, Satan will still not be able to reach you. Before you come back to life, there is a system that covers you. Altars. That we can take advantage of 
there are men who when they come into a city you know everything shakes it's not by the loudness of the publicity but they come in with the presence they carry they come in with the covenants that they carry and you find out that there are strange results strange testimonies that happen to people and then they leave we'll find somewhere and stop i want to pray my life has changed like day and night because of this truth that i have discovered i found it as a key because there were certain limitations in my life though anointed though a great man of god though having encounters with jesus at a point in my life there were certain mountains that would not move there were certain doors that would not open regardless of what i did and i said lord but your word says if i have faith like a monster seed i know that i have faith and then god began to teach me for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep because they cannot discern the body their inability to discern the body that has been prepared to host the spirit everything is possible but you need to know how to make it possible you need to know how to make it possible this night looking at me and hearing me by the thousands are men and women who have done certain things alone you have struggled spiritually you love God you have held on to some of these principles but the truth is that door has refused to open you have done what you know to do I show you the third key you must engage it's called the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants God has entered covenants with individuals he has entered covenants with systems please I can beg you some of you are looking for admission listen to what I'm telling you and get into school otherwise sit down there roaming around that you have 230 and repeat the same nonsense that has been going on some things in life will not move just by your personal faith do you know that when Jesus was on earth he was not the only miracle worker please answer me is that true there was a time his disciples saw other people who were not in Jesus' camp but they were still performing miracles not by Baal not Beelzebub and they said ah, Jesus this is this is strange ah, I thought you were the savior and he said I paraphrasing I came to introduce something new but until the new comes the old is still valid there was a way miracles were done in the old covenant there were people who believed it there was a priesthood that made it possible for instance an angel would come and steer the water was Jesus around when it happened no but it happened a particular prophet in the Bible when a woman was sick or someone was sick he made herbs leaves and put it on the legs of the person are we together if you understand what I'm teaching you then you will know that when you stand and the mountains look like they are not you have done all you know to do listen stop trying harder the key is not harder the key is step back and look at the body of Christ don't look at yourself again look at the body of Christ what spiritual tribe is connected to the possibility that will open the door I'm looking for you can be a man of God full of grace and prayer but you know that there is no prosperity in your ministry and you are saying Lord we have prayed we have fasted this prosperity thing is not working step back and look at the body of Christ a body has thou prepared for me sometimes God can give you just one instruction go to any living faith branch hold what you have as a seed and go and sow it in that you don't even have to be prayed for the moment you pray for it you go back and God says fine what you have done 
is called alignment to a covenant and God begins to relate with you the same way he relates with God's servant Bishop David Oedipo and you will find out mysteriously mysteriously something happened recently somebody called me and they had a court case recently and Ejimi, this court case humanly speaking was already against the person there is no human way on earth he would have won that case and when he called me i said tell me the truth when he told me everything ah, i said you're in trouble you're in trouble because I, I i know a bit about legalities and i know that based on that thing if he's to spend time in the prison it will be nothing less than 10 years away from his wife and his children but i told him i said well i don't know what to tell you but if you can believe what i want to tell you there can be a way out i told him i said i can pray for you god has given me grace for territories and i want to pray for you i prayed for that guy do you know i got to find out he didn't even show up on the day of because of fear he didn't show up in the court he refused to show up and later he would tell me that the judge looked and looked at everything and threw away the case from the court now please brothers and sisters please you went to school you are intelligent in nigeria who does that <sighs> you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your you reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. The Bible says Christ is the head of all principalities. He recognizes their existence. So he says your only advantage is that I am the head. Not that you say they are not there. No. It's your Bible. I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence. But many people say assume they are not there are you kidding when they refuse jesus from entering back they say who is this king of glory he had to explain himself christ is the head of principalities he said he has been made above thrones so he recognizes them above dominions and every name that is named not only in this earth but in the world to come what do you not know that is responsible for the devil sinking through your life and making it look like God is not alive please hear what I'm saying a job will not just come because you think you're a Nigerian there are mysteries you have done there are many arrogant pastors in ministry who are suffering this they've done everything to do but the key is an alignment an alignment that opens up spiritual possibilities an alignment those who were in Mina, I'm sure maybe my friend Pastor Pete Rock is listening. Pete Rock, you know, I love House on the Rock and all of that. When we went to Mina, Aaron, you were there. The same thing you see in Koinonia. Crowds here, overflow on top and then outside. is alignment. Brothers and sisters, you may be a musician, but you can align to a system that will give you more than songs. You will find out that things are opening. You are a student, but you align to somebody who is paying you salary. And they say, no, you must be sleeping with the man. You say, no, I, I, I just belong to a tribe that has a covenant with God that is respected even by hell. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, what is not at work in your life is still available. It takes humility and alignment many people will insult me for what i'm teaching you now because they will think i'm teaching you human worship god is my witness I, I i don't have time for all of those things but you have to be careful who you listen to don't let men do well meaning to deceive you there are systems on earth that represent spiritual possibilities you may argue it and never see certain things happen in your life please hear me look beyond your personal strength and look at the privileges that God has put in the body 
a body has thou prepared for me a body has thou prepared this koinonia that you look at every time maybe one day i will take out time and share the whole journey so that you will know that this is not just an ambition of a man to have a ministry if i want fame there are easier ways i'm not dull i can write books are we together access to the riches and the blessings of heaven there are covenants you align with that will open you up to possibilities i don't want to begin to give you testimonies upon testimonies hallelujah we're already preparing to buy our land i will not tell you where it is until we buy it some of you will be surprised you will open your mouth and say it's a lie you can't get land like that a property that will swallow cgc how many times in this area because when you catch the keys listen 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 i don't say this to brag i'm challenging you it's, it's not by trying no door opens to shouting it opens to keys god is giving you something now you have been writing jam you are brilliant but it's not working don't stay foolish and say i i i know this time around i i got 250 no are we together possibilities there are men and women who god has put in the body of christ in territories that's why satan creates a lot of controversy around their life to find them so that what you are supposed to receive will not be given to you but as we pray the devil is a liar somebody's door is about to be open rise up on your feet everybody and let's pray We are going to pray three prayer points and I want you to pray it with every, every ounce of strength. No carelessness, no looking around. You are going to cry to God. Prayer point number one. Lord, I acknowledge that I am limited as a person. No matter how spiritual I am. As a pastor, as an apostle, as a prophet, as a teacher. As an individual, I am limited and I come before you with every sense of humility, acknowledging my limitation. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I acknowledge. Lord, I acknowledge. I acknowledge that you have built a system. You have built a system beyond the personal spiritual progress of a man. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. This strategy called the body of Christ to lift men, to bail them out of captivity. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Look up, please. Prayer point number two. I want you to be sincere before God. Mention all the things you know you have tried and done all you know to do but has not changed. Mention it before God because we are about to engage a mystery. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've prayed over this failure in my family. Nothing has seemed to change.
please pray. Outside, make sure you're praying. Those online, make sure you're praying. himself so Jesus had to come and man's salvation now is tied to his alignment to the finished work of Christ it's a pattern there are times your victory will be based on the finished work of others not just of Christ but they have cried the cry for you so you don't cry again they have taken the scars for you so you don't take it again but if you do not know satan will cheat you there are times you will stand before that red sea please hear me just the same please you stand before the red sea and the red sea will refuse to part you will you will invoke your personal altar it will not open let me tell you there are stubborn challenges like that in the life of a man. You will agree with your wife, your husband. It will not move. When all else fail, switch. Switch. Remember what tribe you belong to. Remember the spiritual possibilities that come. And say, oh God of salvation. Remember, 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 remember. 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 And all of a sudden, your God will arise, not for your sake. Listen, hear me. I don't know if it's a tight booklet of redeemed or living faith. I can't remember which of them. But there was a woman who had been a faithful titan. I don't know if it's redeemed or living faith. One of the ministries, she testified. And robbers came to her house and assassins to kill her and kill her husband. They stepped into the house. They were with guns. The man was there. His wife was there. All that there was was to shoot. And there was nothing to do. The man just, he knew he was gone. All else failed. And all the woman did was to bring out her tight booklet. And dropped it on the ground. Remember the covenant. Is it not your house that was built with my money? Is it not souls that are saved with my money? Don't waste your time trying to say one day God will come. No, that one day you can create it. The day the pattern is there. As powerful as Jesus was, his heavens were closed. 
until he had to encounter a man the heavens of Jesus did not open because he was called Jesus it was open based on the covenant that came down to John the Baptist and so when John the Baptist saw Jesus he said behold the lamb and he said that's not the issue my heavens are closed and he said suffer it to be so I can't neglect the pattern and when John dipped Jesus and brought him out there was a transference and God responded the heavens opened and he said this is my beloved son please hear me it's not as hard as your life makes it look you just don't know what to do we are going to cry and say Lord show me what I must do to come out of this challenge in my presence lift your voice and pray there is always something to do koinonia cry show me oh God what is the secret the missing link to my healing ministry the missing link to bring prosperity to my life Who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? There is a mystery, there is a pattern, there is a mystery, there is a pattern. Let hope rise. Darkness when losing your hope be light. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness when losing your hope be light. Let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Darkness when losing your hope be light. Hallelujah. Listen, we are going to pray. Please look up, everybody. We are going to pray. Just one more prayer and I will pray for us. I'd like you to pray. This ground, not I don't mean physical ground, but this mystery called koinonia is, is enshrined in strange covenants that are responsible for possibilities. Now please pay attention. We're about to pray strategic prayer. Are we together? I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I invoke the covenant that is upon this ministry the possibilities that your appearance the sacrifices are brought I invoke it upon my life pray the covenant of open doors the covenant of his Shekinah glory Access to kings, access to strange favor. Pastors, pray. Let it come upon my ministry, oh God. Pray. Let it come upon my life. Lord, I've written this jam by my strength. I've tried and tried, but I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to make money by my strength I've fasted I've sown seed I invoke the covenant Lord I've tried to get a job I've tried to get a job it's not working I cry to the God of heaven let hope let hope 
Let it rise tonight. Let it rise tonight. The covenant of long life. The covenant of honor, strange honor, access to kings, access to nobles, access to royalties, access to power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you pray this next prayer, listen, there will be strange impartations and strange testimonies on people. This, these are testimonies coming from heaven. Are we together? I want you to pray it with all your heart. All your heart, all your heart. Listen, listen, see that you are part of this great house is no guarantee that you will enjoy the blessings that come. It must be intentional. Proximity is not connection. Are we together? Proximity is not connection. I have tapped into the covenant. That God has had with people who have gone higher than me. And they have opened me to strange doors. Realms that I know are not realms that are as a result of my personal prayer life. I'm a product of many anointings. Many graces. Many spiritual possibilities. Please hear what I'm telling you. I'm stepping into a strange. I show you a deep mystery. Many of you will not appreciate it until you struggle and life whips nonsense out of you, you will come back to this message and it will make sense to you. There are many ministries that are anointed but they may never grow. They have done all they need to do. They have prayed. There are groups. There are all kinds of sincere people around. You've done all you know to do. Listen, you were not designed to do everything as regards your growth by yourself. That's why God put the body. A body has thou prepared. A body has thou prepared. Are we together? There are mysteries. When a Jimmy shared with me the supernatural birth of his wife, I couldn't believe it. In minutes, she had given birth. Case closed. Because there are mysteries you engage. Are we together? Please hear what I'm saying. You see Hope standing. You see Aaron's wife standing. Almost as if they didn't give birth. Right? There is a mystery. What you don't know does not mean it cannot work. You just don't know how to make it work. Are we together? We are going to pray. One last prayer with all your heart. Every area you know must work in your life. Listen, listen, listen. It pleases the Lord when you have testimonies. It pleases the Lord there are some of us, certain sicknesses are killing us. No, You've taken drugs, you've done everything without your imagination. There are, there, are, there are graces that we have seen. Sometimes, all it takes is recognition to say, Lord, I tap into this grace. I shared with you my story when I went to sow a seed to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. And when I came out, the Lord asked me, kneel down on the ground, bare ground that ground. I laid my hands upon it. It's not about idolizing altars and all of that, no. And he said, lay your hands on the ground. I laid my hands on the bare ground. And the Lord said, from this day, you have entered the overflow anointing. Are we together? It was an old woman who prophesied upon my life and said, my son, forever you will walk upon gold. That's what that mama told me. Till tomorrow, to, whether she's a human being or an angel, I don't know. I bought sugar cane of 50 naira. Sugar cane of 50 naira changed my destiny forever. Are we together? 
you join them, you will die like them. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are many arrogant people in our society who believe they know what they are doing. Even when they are quarter to destruction, they will still be bragging. If you are not seeing results for a long time in your life, please calm down and find out what is it. Thank God for the area you are seeing results. But what of the areas where there are no results? We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the God of your salvation in one minute. And say, Lord, the unction, the grace, the unction that must land upon my life now for those doors to open. If it did not come through my personal prayer life, then I take advantage of this spiritual formation that is in this house. I take advantage of this spiritual formation. Are we praying? Go ahead and pray. I'm about to pray for you, but pray. You see, listen. Listen. It is not what you do that makes you succeed it is how you do it it's not doing certain things that make people succeed I want to pray for you I have learned in my little life that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference, the difference. praise the Lord I stretch my hands upon all of you right now as I speak. May the grace that lifts men come upon every one of you as I speak right now. Receive it right now. The grace that lifts people. There is an anointing that lifts a man. It's not trial and error. Let it come upon you right now. I open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound will know that your communications are of the spirit. There is a grace that lifts men. You can try. You can struggle. You can beg, you can connect. No. See, every time, listen, every time you see consistent results, regardless of the situation, there is an anointing. Please, learn this. There is an anointing. There is an anointing that translates men swallows up the weaknesses of people may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ God will give you wisdom let your ministry enter another dimension I pray for character for all of you see this is usually the problem listen let me I'm, I'm teaching you are learning the most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it not the anointing because you see the anointing is very charismatic the most powerful ability of a man of God is self-control the ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say the ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion there are many 
of we people we don't have self-control especially over an opportunity like this everybody now wants to show and you do not know where god has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh because some of you are here for this same anointing but you see the, it's not just the anointing believe me this is not an issue of prayer and fasting it's an issue of knowing god and understanding his ways god is only committed to backing what he instructed if he did not direct you he will not back you hallelujah god bless you john chapter 3 verse 16 let's just look at the scripture quickly and then we'll pray there is a lot that god wants to do tonight these guys have already stared the anointing and you see the thing with the anointing is once he's stared it doesn't stop it doesn't know whether it's miracle service or easter john chapter 3 verse 16. i like you all to be sensitive the anointing has been stared up in this place many of you do not know what the staring of the anointing is the moment your eye sees there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes so once your eye sees it immediately your spirit is open and the moment your spirit is open the spirit of god starts moving he doesn't care whether you are preached or not because that's his desire hallelujah and usually once the anointing starts moving it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open in the name of jesus i'm hearing the sound of thunder i know this is not physical i'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do i see this it's like the sound of thunder what I hear in my spirit. hallelujah please pay attention the meeting is on i'm seeing ministering spirits it's a class of angels i'm seeing them walk inside and outside just let me do what is happening ministering spirits there are not many times i see these kinds of angels i'm seeing them walking inside and outside ministering spirits they are angels that impart strange levels of graces Ah, ah, yeah, say, na, na, de, na, na, de, na, na, de, na, na, de, na, 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 they will touch you where you are as they touch you they release your miracles as they touch you they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families
Direction. That's what I hear. God is giving men direction. It's like an anointing. It will come on you outside and inside. Direction and end to that confusion. Right now. It's coming like light. But then you will hear him direct you. Direction. 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 What is that area of confusion? His light shines upon it right now. For marriage. Direction. Direction, direction, direction for where to settle down. Geographic location, direction is coming by the Holy Ghost. Direction. Somebody is praying and say, Lord, show me. The Lord is saying, I am showing you. It's coming upon your spirit. I'm giving you direction on what to do. Direction. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone. And the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. Is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing
Just sit down if you can. Those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3, 16. I just want to the Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump you have a lump in your left breast check it right now check it right now check it and come out right now right now I don't know why God is just interrupting please check it check it check it right now in fact I see three people check it this is a family please we are not playing games inside and outside i'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing the name like Augustina Augustina if there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you, there's somebody outside. This same anointing is touching the person outside. The second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness. Because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down. And the Lord is telling me, release Augustina. Release Augustina release augustina release augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of jesus i release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify i release both of you prophetically in the name of jesus christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family god wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. And the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention please. He says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her, wrap her. I command that spirit to leave her right now. 
now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for God so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister to you. are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life.
like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible. The Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people, like the ten lepers. He would heal one and just walk away. Because his desire was not to show power. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his Father than building a ministry. People tried to say, look, build a ministry. And he said, no, 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 no. I can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced. My love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation and everything. We talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless. I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood he gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen. Listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place. Because the Bible says we all like sheep 
have gone astray. Right? He said, every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They're all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere for they can sit around and I will attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me. Listen, please. About to destroy me. And the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself. And then someone comes. And while I'm on my way to destruction, he interrupts. And he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is, I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you, but they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First, stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33 year old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up, he said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen, if you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one. I guarantee you people have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant. In the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit. While that was happening. He became Adam. From Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross. He was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus. Adam. The very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him. And he knew that it is more blessed to give. Than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross. And they nailed him. As his blood began to drip upon the earth. And in that excruciating 
It was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says, it is finished. It is finished. Is a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is, what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the Father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program. And I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him. I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him, let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1, when you read down what? I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess of, of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption 
man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he's so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him, 
see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what is lord the word lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you 
from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i i'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe, God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please listen. To open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh I have life I have life the same way you say I have a car the same way you say I have an ATM card can you use it I have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content 
of that life. It's like buying a phone. You admire it, you look at it, but you do not know how to work with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not. Not they have not. They know not. Neither will they understand. He said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall what? Die like men, men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker of an inheritance, a partaker of a reality. But it says, as long as he's a child, the word child here is devoid of strategy, devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process. He said he differed not from a slave. I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a cause. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God. Speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left. But he said, as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you. But you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying Keep believing that it's gone. One day it will go. Hey, wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So although they read, that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know less fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens, when I'm tithing, 
I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is a way. The life of God that can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter. And Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging, I'm not under any curse, I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction, persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath, for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No. Let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom. So that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me. It's not just by claiming. Um, you will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting. We're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the Spirit. 
So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it at the response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith, you believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction waiting for your participation. You got up your faith. He calls it your faith. So what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, he's standing up. It's a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement. And he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus 
what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am hallelujah if the father did not give jesus it's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said i'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws a and say oh guy you know we are nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter i'm a military man this is my wife i paid the price for six months to get a yes from her she's in that gutter I don't know the consequence of my action if you think I'm going to forgive you listen if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then I assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night <laughs> hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can god do it listen don't don't make that foolish statement tonight i i was praying on the tonight before i came here i was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding if you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play i lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able i 
Are you praying? the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet mountain of financial hardship mountain of cancer mountain of mediocrity oh you must go you must go in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah say after me tonight in the name of Jesus the faith of God is at work in me I have the faith to receive I have the faith to believe I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me see now sir watch this it says they saw a man who had been there and he he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms Peter and John and he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood. the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not God will not just get up and act listen it was God that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say Lord I put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray Lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh God we are here put pressure on his integrity 
we have come oh god that you prove yourself shake it we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat keep coming All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. Look at me, all of you in front. 
some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up 
I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time. Maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now, we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards. Leave her, John. Leave her. Whatever she wants to do, just let her do. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please quickly, your loved ones. Please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. begin to pass your request very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why I'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what 
your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from Ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara state and Ekiti state and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind i was saying guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play it was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying eh, Jimmy. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife Ah. when they said that I said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this 
we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning I saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 I saw the obituary he just died 141 I said I got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around here I just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of God you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the, the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that I always believed it but now that I've seen it ah, there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football I just remember that old woman I said plane you are joking I'm surrounded by too many mysteries Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer. Alive. 100 and something years. You see the women as if they are 50 something. But some of them are in their 90s, 80s, 100s. That's grace, brothers. It's not about anybody praying for longevity. There is an anointing that comes upon territory. And tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say Lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand. Leave the drums. Just lift your right hand. This
don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shiba baba kata altars 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 right now shake it in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you 
He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy and say, Lord, this marks the end of it. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Shekete preskate paradabalaba. Shopra tosko to praska barata pariadabash. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place in the name of jesus we command the foundations of the earth we command the firmaments we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of god's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of jesus mighty and everlasting god standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus and end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus Blind eyes open, deaf ears open, destinies moved forward in the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because speedily, according to the seasons of life, they receive a performance in the matchless name of Jesus. We decree, Amen, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can. I saw a spirit and, and I'm praying for the students now please listen when I was outside ministering I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names I pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction I want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy 
the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor 
in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what I'm, there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.